Hey, welcome to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're on location in Arkansas City, Kansas. Now, we're at a shop here called Spanky's, and it's an auto restoration shop privately held by a guy by the name of Terry Boyer. We call him TB. Anyway, uh, I'm going to knock on the door and see what's available so we can show you some restoration tips. Well, we're, we're here at Spanky's and there's a, a restoration taking place on what's called an eyebrow. And if you notice over here, this is an eyebrow that's been uh, rusted out, uh, looks pretty bad. Tommy, how come you can't just go ahead and put Bondo on here or do something of that nature? Well, you know, back in the day, uh, they called it Earl Shive. You, you could have done that. but. And as a matter of fact, this one may have already had that done. So in that case, you'll see here we are doing it again. Uh, we don't want to do it again. We want to fix it this time. We want it done right. We, we don't want to come back two, three, four, five years and do it again. So we opt to cut it out. Okay. We cut it out, replace it with new metal. Okay. Well, I noticed that you've got this already cut out, prepped. It's tacked, and it looks like it's in a, a butt weld condition. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. We, we call this the butt weld. Okay, and I, I noticed that you've got a couple of MIG tacks on there. And, and MIG welding has been around for years and years, and it's, it's pretty easy to do. But I also noticed that th this part has a little edge to it. So if I were to MIG weld that, would I typically slide that and create a lap weld? That is what that is called. That's why this area is lower than this. It'll slide in under the original metal on the fender, and it's called a lap weld. You can overlap it. It creates a rust issue, a trap in there. Okay. We like to cut that out of there. Okay. Uh, and go with the butt weld. So why, why do you think more people don't go with TIG welding instead of MIG? Well, it's, uh, for one thing, you have to have both hands to TIG weld with. I can fit these or put this in with a MIG welder and do it by myself. Okay, so uh, you, can, you can hold it, I hold can the hold MIG it gun? And, and MIG gun and, and tack it in there. Okay. And, and you can go back and weld it with the MIG welder. The heat issues are a lot greater with MIG than with TIG. Okay. Uh, and it creates warpage. That's more work, more time, more money, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I've got a couple of MIG tacks on here and a couple of TIG tacks, but we're, we're eventually going to tack weld this a little bit more, and you're going to cold work it okay, cool. while, I, while I tack it, All right. uh, and there's going to be a significant amount of tacks on this. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll get started, I'll set up the TIG machine, and uh, I'm going to take your cue. I'm going to make a tack wherever you want me to, okay. and check the mismatch, All right. and then when this thing is finished, it's going to be riddled with tacks. Uh, we'll give it a last review let you do any cold working you want, and All then right. I'll go into a complete weld. Cool. Now, when this, when this weld is finished, it's going to have a very low uh, profile, meaning that you're not going to have to polish off very much at all. That's good. I like that. The less you have to polish off, the less mud you have to put on it to get your finished product, the better it's going to be, the better the paint job's going to look. Uh, it all hinges on this part right here. Okay, well, I think if, if we get this done today, that's going to make Spanky awful happy. Spanky, uh, we've got to make him happy. Uh, this guy, man, he's a slave driver. Well, he's, he gets cranky. Uh, he's so. on you, man. I'm, I'm telling you. All right. Well, let's let's get started on this. Roger that. Okay. Oh, Spanky's here. Oh, he's back. God, dang it! I thought he wasn't here. <laughs> when did he sneak in? <laughs> I'm putting the tack on there. It only requires about 30 amps to make the tack. So I put tack number one, and I'm going to move over between two tacks. Put another one, and then I'm going to move back towards me. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tack, and it keeps a mismatch from forming. Tack. And then I'm going to go between two tacks. And then I'm going to make a third tack. 
Every once in a while you get a gap area. It's just from grinding. It's not a perfect fit, nor will you ever get a perfect fit, but sometimes I use a uh, technique called a gap tack. Okay, we finished tacking this, and if you'll notice, there's tacks about every quarter of an inch. And all that, what that does is it prevents mismatch from happening while you're welding. Now, John came through and did a final check for all the mismatch. He did a cold working. Again, he did cold working actually uh, right after I finished the tack. It, it just allows the metal to move a little bit easier. So in our next segment, we're going to show you how to weld this up in sequence. Thanks for watching. I'm Mr. Tate.